Nextcloud is the free and open source competitor to the likes of Microsoft 365 and Google Workspace. So when I hear that there's going to be a major update, I get excited. And what they're going to be announcing is Nextcloud Hub 4. Now I could just watch the live stream and get my press email, but that'll be too easy. So packed my bags, got on a plane, and I flew to Berlin, Germany. Right now I am sitting in the offices for Nextcloud. And they have been very nice to let me set up and record this part of the video right here. Now, based on the limited amount of information I have, they are adding some AI integrations, a few new applications, and one that might have even Notion breaking a sweat. There's updates to mail, files, and oh, a whole lot more. So with that, the event is about to start, so let's see what they have to say. Right here, right now, I'm going to run over some of the major changes and highlights coming to Nextcloud Hub 4. First, let's talk about the Smart Picker and some of the integrated AI features that is going to be coming with it. For example, within Talk with a simple forward slash, you activate Smart Picker. And this, in turn, gives you a wide variety of options. This Smart Picker works across the board in all Nextcloud applications. For example, in the word processor, you can go under Insert and Pick Link. And from there, you can add some of the non-AI items such as map location, text template, collectives. You can add in a table, which we are going to uh, touch on in a little bit, or videos from YouTube and PeerTube, translations, and more. Now, that's cool, but what really makes Smart Picker awesome is some of the new AI integrations that they've added. These new AI integrations include image generation with the likes of Stable Diffusion, Chat GPT text generation, which I personally find helpful for generating content and documents that won't be for publishing, or even helping me generate templates or general content ideas. Additionally, many of the AI tools will have advanced options allowing you to select the exact models that they're going to be working off of, and some of these models can be hosted locally, and some of them are going to be hosted from other services. One of my most anticipated feature is the integration of OpenAI's Whisper, which according to their website is a open sourced neural network that approaches human level robustness and accuracy on English speech recognition, giving us a feature that I heavily depend on with my phone, the uh, voice to text within our Nextcloud instance. Obviously using AI especially Third-party AI does bring up some security and privacy concerns. In an attempt to inform users of the potential risk, Nextcloud is giving users an ethical AI rating based on both of the availability of the code and model, as well as the training data. Which means we have different labels to introduce these like traffic light symbols. I'm um, actually not with three, but with four uh, like uh, stages. Um, the first is green. This is like, um, an, in, in, uh, according to our definition, fully ethical um, AI solution because the code is open source, which means you can check um, if it's efficient or not and if it's, it can be improved and it can be better and yeah, create less uh, energy consumption in the future. Um, the second uh, um, thing is that it, we think that the machine learning model should be freely available because then you can run it on premise. You can have on your own server your own machine learning system. And uh, the third requirement is the data set it should also be open, freely available, because then you can make sure that there's no uh, discriminating uh, data in it, and if yes, you can detect it and, and fix it. So according to this, uh, like, uh, rules and requirements, we created this framework. So we put our features, like with this traffic light symbols, like into, like, this, yeah, into this scale, where you say, okay, this is a critical feature, and this is a more ethical feature. Now we're going to have to move on to the talk application. Talk in Nextcloud combines the very best of Microsoft Teams and Zoom within your very own instance. And some of the changes within Hub 4 allow Nextcloud Talk to kind of take the edge and the advantage against some of the aforementioned applications. First is the addition of breakout rooms. Breakout rooms can be best thought of as groups. This is common in large online classrooms where teachers want to give students smaller groups to help them collaborate on projects better. When creating breakout rooms, the organizer can set the amount of rooms and decide if they want to manually or automatically have individuals divided out between the 
these groups. Once created, there is a clean interface to manage and remove these groups, as well as being able to send these groups messages. Another very welcomed addition is the ability to record within Talk. This is wonderful if you're needing to record classrooms, lectures, important meetings, presentations, really anything. To actually start a recording, you just hit the three dots and you'll see the option there. When it is starting, it will notify you and you'll see your little timer turn red. A recording will stop either when the class or call ends or you can manually stop by clicking on that time and clicking stop recording. When the recording is finished, it will send it to chat as well as saving the recording file within your talk folder from files. It's not available yet, but on the next point release, you're gonna have the option to actually change the recording settings for things such as the uh, video quality. Tables is the newest addition to their already impressive line of applications. This is being billed as a alternative to Microsoft SharePoint, but based on what I've seen, it feels more like a Notion light. The application itself is rather simple, allowing you to create tables, with a rather nice user interface. There are a few templates such as to-do list and customers, and within your table you can create a new column with a variety of column types such as text, time, date, yes, no, progress bar, links, and more. However, I would like to see some more features such as the ability to, for example, tag or add members of your Nextcloud instance to rows, or even maybe like a, a drop-down selection thing. That would be nice. But overall, what we're getting for the very first release is awesome, and they could just build from here. If you look at the apps, lots of the apps that we have in our app store that community people made, like a, like a cookbook, for example, yeah. or a, like a to-do list or some tool to manage, I don't know, some things, they're often like relatively simple database applications where you have some items with like a picture and a link and a, some checkbox and some options and then you can search them and you edit them and reorder them and change them and so on and um, the idea is if you can do something like that with like no code or, mm -hmm. or very little code um, that you can basically configure your own management of your i don't know your your, your library mm -hmm. or like i don't know like your latest trips with your bike or something like that yeah. you can just like configure it together and you have a little small application to manage your personal data mm -hmm. and that's of course also the idea uh, that uh, sharepoint is following so this application is also heavily inspired um, to be like an alternative replacement for, for microsoft sharepoint next up we're gonna have to talk about an improvement within files and that is with their versioning system this is already an amazing tool to help you recover or view previous changes in files but in next cloud hub 4 they're taking this a step further when it comes to the functionality this includes being able to give specific versions of files their own names and next cloud will work smarter using a time-based algorithm to keep one version per minute one per hour and one per day and so on. It will also take into account the available storage on your system and actually start deleting older versions as you start running out of space. And then from there we have Nextcloud Group where there has been substantial improvements in both the mail and calendar applications. First, the mail application is going to give you the ability to have shared mailboxes. For example, if you have a sales or a support email, you'll be able to give multiple people in your organization access to those shared mailboxes for whatever department they happen to work in. And then of course we have some security improvements and this is the addition of S-MIME, or Secure Multi-Purpose Internet Mail Extensions, allowing you to both digitally sign and encrypt ingoing and outgoing mail, ensuring that your email security and information is not compromised. And now within the calendar application, you're gonna have attachment support when you're making appointments. And next we have collectives. If you don't already know about collectives, basically it is a wonderful application that gives you a collaborative knowledge database or wiki dedicated to your project. Organizing all your information onto one main page, you could have sub pages, additional documents attached to it. It's all written in Markdown and because of the new Smart Picker, you can both add things to it with Smart Picker or you can use Smart Picker to add your collectives into some of the other applications. Now, of course, this is not everything that has been added to Nextcloud. There is truly a lot of changes, updates, improvements, etc. On the design end, when adding a background to Nextcloud, it now uses that background 
and picks the accent colors automatically to match and just give a clean overall appearance. Performance in this release has been substantially improved with a 20% boost, loading folder mounts and container handling, OCS API requests are now up to three times faster, and Nextcloud Talk in particular, reduced loading times, server load, and notification delays by up to 99%. I mean, really, truly a ton of stuff. Font management, watermarks on official documents, truly a whole bunch of different things. This will be linked down below. Now, I would like to give a big special thanks to the Nextcloud team. They didn't sponsor this video or anything, but they did help me get out here, so big thank you for that. It has been an absolute pleasure working with you guys for the last couple days, answering my questions, showing me some of the features. It truly has been awesome. And with all that, all the links to everything I mentioned will be down below, as well as tutorials for setting up Nextcloud, whether if you want to use Docker, if you want to use the one-click install on the node, or if you want to do a full manual install, I'll link to Jay's video on that. Uh, with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day, and goodbye.